If there's one thing humans are better at than machines, it's being uh, uncertain. This may sound like a burden. After all, a computer never forgets where it left its keys, but it actually gives us tremendous mental flexibility. Computers can usually only process concrete data and ideas. They either have data about an object or not, true or false. Humans, however, can infer things that we aren't sure of. We know more people exist than we've ever met, even if we don't know who they are, and we know that not every gray Honda we see is the same one that belongs to our friend Greg. Oh, hi Greg. UC Berkeley professor Stuart Russell has been developing a new programming language called Blog, or Bayesian Logic, that aims to bridge the gap between the structured rules of programming and the uncertainty of reality. Professor Russell's work, as appearing in a review article called Unifying Logic and Probability in the July 2015 Communications of the ACM, has implications for everything from web search to nuclear deterrence. In the paper, we talk about a model for extracting information from citations. So we all know what a citation is. It's those things that appear at the end of a paper. Uh, and it says, you know, Smith, comma, J. So they're complicated strings. They have uh, sort of a grammar, but of course, people make mistakes. They forget periods and commas. They put things in bold when they meant to put them in italic. They misspell your name. Before Google Scholar, there was a system called Sightseer. And like everybody else, you know, I typed my name in. In fact, I typed in Russell and Norvig um, because I wrote a textbook with Peter Norvig. Uh, and the system came back and said that actually Russell and Norvig wrote 120 different books, um, which was a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> People make the most amazing mistakes. I mean, the number of ways that my name is misspelled. You know, it's not that difficult, Russell. Uh, but um, Sightseer decided that there was this other bloke called Russell with one L, um, and all the books he wrote obviously are different from the ones that the Russell with two Ls wrote. So in the blog language, to describe this problem, you would simply describe the process by which that string uh, ends up on the paper. How does it get there? Uh, it gets there, first of all, by uh, there being some people um, and those people write some papers, and those papers get cited. When you cite a paper, you take the title and author of the paper, uh, you combine that with other information about where it appeared, uh, you make a big mess of it by introducing typos and uh, forgetting commas and so on, uh, and then you stick it all into a string according to some grammar or other. Above all, they're just strings of text. The only objects they have in them explicitly are the characters themselves. So given that that model, and you can write that in the blog language uh, in just a few dozen lines of code, you then ask a query. So that strings are the evidence, and the query is um, who exists, which authors exist, which papers exist, which author wrote which paper, which paper cites which other paper. And those are questions about the real world, right? a real world which is never mentioned directly in the input data. The goal then is to have a, a formal language that is as expressive as first order logic um, or programs, um, but it has the ability to capture probabilistic information. George Bull talks about it in the 19th century and um, I've been thinking about it since around 1985. The world is uncertain, so when you have things and uncertainty you need something like a probabilistic first-order language. Um, a particular thing that happens when you have things in uncertainty is that you're actually uncertain about what things there are, not just their properties and relations, but even which things exist. Um, and so that's one of the particular things that the blog language does that other languages haven't done up to now. Uh, one of the first applications, once we had the blog system up and running, was something that came along by accident, but actually is a very good fit, uh, which is global seismic monitoring for the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Uh, so the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty says that no one is allowed to uh, have any nuclear explosions anywhere on the Earth. And um, the verification mechanism for that treaty is a huge network of seismic and other stations that uh, listen for uh, the sounds of, of large seismic events. I went to a meeting uh, organized by the UN where they described um, what the problem was. I thought that I understood enough about the problem 
and wrote it out as a blog model. Uh, within about three months, we had a system working better than the UN system. Uh, and right now, it works about three times better. Um, and the UN has announced that they're going to use it uh, as a new monitoring system for the treaty.